Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, Peterisms, where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I have learned as I've grown into the person that I am today. And I have four meditation books with me today and a partridge in a pear tree. And I have my coffee from Starbucks and my uh, new summer cup. Isn't she so pretty? And um, I'm gonna get these videos up and then I'm gonna hang out on the front porch and I'm gonna read a little bit tonight. And I'm actually halfway through a new audiobook, which I'm very excited about. And then I'm gonna watch a couple shows because I'm trying to make it through. <laughs> I was gonna show you guys my list of shows, but I did that in my vlog. I have a list of like 15 shows right now, so I'm gonna try to start making it through my list of shows for the summer. Summer's here, summer's here. It was 88 degrees outside today, and it was so nice. The pups were loving it, running around. It was a beautiful, beautiful day. So uh, I'm, a little, I'm a little sad about my Gerber daisies on my front porch. They're not doing real great, but we're not gonna get, we're not gonna borrow trouble yet. We're gonna put some hope, faith, and love into those Gerber daisies, and we're gonna get them back on track. Okay. So let's get into today's meditations. I'm just gonna kind of skim through these books really quick. It's May 24th. Let's see, I have the Daily Book of Positive Quotations by Linda Pacone. Let's see what the meditation is for that today. See if I'm feeling it. Um, perfection, we'll, okay, perfection is one. Year of Positive Thinking, let's see May 24th. Do, do, do. I cannot believe it's almost June. It seems crazy to me. Um, oh, let's read that one. Okay, let's read this one first. Uh, May 24th, uh, 24th of May, a monthly positivity ritual. Write a list of five things that you enjoy doing. Anything from visiting places you love to reading books that give you pleasure. Share the list with someone for accountability and invite them to write their own list. Then over the next 30 days, schedule time to do each of the items on your list. At the end of the month, share your experience with someone and then write the next month's list. Repeat monthly. Enjoy living a life filled with intentional moments. Oh, wow, I love that so much. And I was just talking on here the other day about doing things that make us happy. Um, you know, doing more things that make us happy because the happier that we are, the more we're enjoying life. And here I just was talking about plants make me happy and I'm sitting out here looking at my squirrel table. We'll have to lean over a little bit. My squirrel table, we're getting ready to get our patio all redone tomorrow. So when it's done and power washed and sealed and repainted, I'm gonna get a bunch of plants out there and enjoy the patio this summer too. So there's two, you know, plants and patio and reading, driving around with my good Judy having fountain pops, watching TV shows. Those are five things I really enjoy. And, you know, I talk about this on my vlog a lot. It's like I have this intention that I want to watch these shows, um, which I know sounds kind of corny, uh, but at the same time, it's like I really enjoy sitting and like outside on the front porch where I've made it like this cozy little area. I really enjoy um, watching shows. And if you watch my vlog videos or my uh, booktube channel, you'll know that I'm really into the cozy mysteries too, right? And I was just actually talking to my friend uh, Mel about this the other day, but then also my good Judy Tanya about the fact that I have been reading a lot of stuff that like true crime and whatever, which I love. I adore it. I adore true crime. No, I love true crime. But I had um, gone back to read the 19th book in the Misfortune series by Jana Deleon because it just came out on Audible. And when I read it, it was like, when I started listening to it, it was like I was back home again. And I was like, oh my God, this book makes me so happy. So last night I finished it and I was driving around and I was listening to this new book that I'm listening to, which is by, um, shoot, uh, hold on a second, um, Dorinda Jones. Dorinda Jones, I didn't even have to look it up. <laughs> So proud of myself. And it's called First Grave on the Right. She wrote a book that I read last summer or last fall, which is actually, I can't believe it's only been like eight months since I've been reading Cozy Mysteries. But it was the book that got me started into reading Cozy Mysteries called um, A Bad Day for Sunshine. And this one's about a grim reaper that's a private investigator. Go figure, I know. But I'm loving it. And it's just, it's, these cozy mysteries make me so happy. And then sitting outside and having candles lit inside and our new bedding on our bed and getting into it at night with my husband and my dogs. It's those small moments in life that make me so happy, you know? So definitely we should be doing things that make us happy. Make a list of those things. Make just, it's five things, okay? Drinking lemonade, you know? Buying a plant or a, a succulent, you know, or whatever and having it around and taking care of it or buying a new candle. You know, you can get a candle at the Dollar Tree for a dollar, you know? Um, doing things that are priceless, spending time with who is it, who's somebody that when you spend time with them, 
that you don't typically spend time with, they make you so happy. Do you have those people? Like, I mean, I talk a lot about my friend Tanya on here and, you know, Alex and things like that. But, like, I have people in my life that when I'm with them, I mean, I literally my spirit goes from, like, a 2 to a 10. Like that. Do you have people like that? It's about spending more time with those people that lift us up and lift our spirits up, you know? And doing more things that make us happy. I love that meditation. That was a fantastic meditation. All right. Let's read from Journey to the Heart by Melody Beatty. Because it's typically more of a kind of like, let's tell a story. Let's see. May 24. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, well, rituals connect us with faith. Um, let's read this. Okay. May 24th. Stop, I stopped um, in at the Franciscan Monastery, a short visit to look around. I bought a, a keychain, returned to my car, then realized I had misplaced my keys. I went back inside and talked to the receptionist. Just then, a short priest joined our conversation. He had a bald head encircled by a short fringe of hair, and he wore a flowing black robe. Let me show you what I do when I lose something, he said. Uh, I asked St. Anthony for help. The next moment, the priest was spinning in a circle, clapping his hands in a joyful prayer. St. Anthony, St. Anthony, please look around. Something's been lost and cannot be found. He stopped, looked at me, then smiled. Now you'll find your keys, he said. He was right. Within 30 seconds, we found the keys. They were on a counter in a place we had looked twice before. For some reason, we just hadn't seen them. But I found something more wonderful than my car keys. I had witnessed a delightful man expressing pure, innocent joy in a ritual that helped him and others through the days. What are the rituals that are important to you that awaken joy, innocence, and faith in you? Do you allow yourself to use these rituals freely? What were the rituals you enjoyed as a child, the ones that brought you comfort? Do you remember them? Engage in these rituals, use them freely, share them with others as the priest did with me. Rituals connect us to faith. They're faith in uh, action. Rituals are reminders of our connection to God. They bring us back to God and ourselves. I love that. Um, you know, it's interesting because I don't have tons of rituals, but one of the things that I do in the mornings, and I tend to do it more when it's nice outside because I can go outside and do it, is I take a couple of my meditation books, I sit on the front porch or the back porch if the dogs are running around, and I get a glass of water or I make a cup of coffee or whatever. Now that I have my mason jars, I'm going to um, be making more iced coffee in the morning to start my day. And then I sit out there and I do my prayers, I do my meditations with the books. Um, I do an oral gratitude list, which I've been meaning to get back to doing a written gratitude list. I don't know what's stopping me. I really don't. Like I say it and then I just kind of forget it. Um, I just like saw something climb up the window back there. There's like birds going in my fern on my front porch. Um, <laughs> I just noticed that today that they were flying in and out. Uh, but you know, I used to also, before I went to bed, I, I still do do prayer before I go to bed, but I did very intentional prayer on the steps going upstairs. I know it sounds crazy, but for me, being on the stairs was like a way for me. To, I was like, as I went upstairs, I like did my prayers and um, my nighttime meditations. And I did an inventory of the day. We call it a 10-step inventory. When you do like a spot check inventory of your day, like, was I kind today? Do I owe anybody an amends? You know, things like that. And um, I've gotten away from doing some of that. Like, I'll, I'll have days where I do it, but not consistently. And here's the thing. When I was getting up every single morning and I was doing a written gratitude list and I was sitting outside and I was full of the sunlight of the spirit, so to speak. And when at the end of the day, I would do my prayers on my knees before I went to bed and I did a spot check inventory every single day, you know, not just when it was convenient. I was much happier. Things were going much better. So these rituals, and they don't have to be spiritual rituals in our life, right? They can just be things like watering your plants or making coffee in the morning or making your bed. Like making our bed is like something that we both like, depending on who is last out of bed, we make the bed so that when we come back in the morning, I know a lot of people like a messy bed. My husband used to like a messy bed, but now when we come home, we're getting ready to go to bed at night. We have like this nice bed to get into like a hotel room. That's one of the rituals we do. That's not a spiritual ritual, you know? Before, back in the day, I haven't done this as much lately, see? I used to do um, a hydrate, see, see? I used to wash my face, do a hydrating face mask, uh, lip, uh, uh, the Laneige lip mask at night, hydrating lip mask, um, and do all that kind of stuff. And it really took a couple moments to like, uh, take care of myself like with scent and you know smell and washing my face and doing all of that for the next day and it wasn't so much about the skincare regimen as it was it just relaxed my soul for a couple moments before I laid my head on the pillow so I think I have some work to do I think there are some things I need to get back to that I need to do I need to start doing a written gratitude list 
Um, I need to make a list of five things that I want to do uh, this next month that will make me happy. I need to uh, start making a conscious, taking conscious time in the moment, on the morning, every single morning, and I need to do my prayers and my meditations, uh, or my prayers, meditations, and my inventory before I go to bed every night. And and do my skincare regimen. Because it always relaxed me. I would go in and I would put my phone down next to the bed. I'm still very good about not being on my phone before I go to bed because I just like, it helps my mind not spiral as much or take notes. Like I'll go on my phone and write down notes if I don't. Um, I notice I do it more when like we're on vacation. Like I'll have my phone and I'll be like looking through it. At home, I go plug in my phone and then I get ready for bed. So, you know, to do all that is kind of detaching at the end of the day um, and let it, allowing my mind to rest. And so those are some things I need to work on. So I'm going to work on that. <laughs> and let me know if any of those things work for you or your rituals. And then I'm going to come back in a couple days and I'll let you know if I've been doing that and see how I feel. You know, it's interesting because recently I was talking to my sponsor and I said something to her. I don't even remember what we were talking about, but she said, you were so happy in November when you were doing that gratitude list every day. She was like, go back to doing a daily gratitude list. And she was absolutely right. Why? You know, I don't know if you guys can see it. It's like in the reflection of the window and the, in the over here, but the, I can see these birds flying into the fern. It's, just, it's the craziest thing. But anyway, um, yeah, so those things that make us the happiest, it's like we get better, and then, I, I talked about this the other day on a video over here, it's like we get better and then we stop doing those things that make us the happiest, or make us the most content, or the most serene, or peaceful, right? Or the happiest, and um, I'm gonna get back to doing those things. So, um, anyway, I, I guess I had forgotten how important those were, and uh, I love you guys, and I, I hadn't forgotten, I'd gotten lazy, I'd gotten lazy, so, and complacent, you know, same thing. Kind of. So anyway, I love you guys. Let me know what you think about those uh, meditations in the comment section below, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.